As with you all, the disruption of COVID has forced us to stop and take time to consider the delivery of all our library services to the research community of Edith Cowan. We take guidance from the university's strategic plan and values to shape our services. We hear constantly of the cut in funding opportunities for researchers and new infrastructure together with organisational and structural changes, which has forced us again to realign and deliver more with less. The Library Research Services team is a small team of just four full-time staff and one part-time member. All staff are encouraged to learn more about the research activities across the university so that we can gain a greater understanding of our research needs. We have seen a greater urgency to work a lot more closely with other service centres, sharing knowledge and eliminating the duplication of service. Working relationships, although present, have been fostered with the research governance team to include data management plans and storage requirement information gathered within the ethics approval process, eliminating duplication of work for the researcher, but also allowing us, the library, to be alerted to potential data reuse, data sharing and ongoing data storage requirements. The research governance team has now also taken responsibility for researcher professional development. The work on developing a professional development framework has enabled library workshops and learning to this group have greater outreach and profile. Management of a central open access fund from the library has allowed us to have meaningful interaction with many of the research staff and to learn a lot of where our researchers are publishing and given opportunity to advocate and educate about open access and open science. Also to work with corporate marketing team to ensure promotional opportunities of the research are explored. Encouraging staff to participate in research opportunities by reintroducing a literature search service does allow a greater level of time management and allocation of tasks but has given additional benefit of building meaningful relationship with research staff and to truly gain understanding of their obstacles and potential areas of research service development. In 2019, a review of the current institutional repository was undertaken. Unfortunately, any funding for the adoption of a new repository with greater functionality is no longer available. This, however, has given new opportunity to work with the provider to enhance the collection display and housing of non-traditional research output. Other members of our team will now also give some insight into the support we deliver. PCU Library Research Services have recently prioritised better highlighting non-traditional research outputs by utilising improved embedding, streaming and download options for audiovisual materials in our repository, Research Online. The options now available in the repository allow the flexibility to accommodate copyright and permissions considerations while highlighting researchers' achievements and sharing them to benefit the wider community. Researchers who produce creative outputs have often expressed that they value the search engine optimisation that the repository offers, making their outputs more discoverable. But we are now able to promote the additional benefits of the Research Online dashboards. These were recently expanded to incorporate PlumX metrics, enabling tracking of impact beyond traditional citation metrics. Views, downloads of video and audio materials are recorded, as well as attention on social media, news media, library holdings, captures on Mendeley and more. The alternative metrics are also useful to early career researchers who produce more traditional outputs as a means of quantifying the impact of recent publications that have not yet been cited. Alternative metrics can be utilised within applications for promotions and grants to highlight recent publications that are already attracting attention and may be cited in the future. They are also a valuable means of identifying successful approaches to publishing. When one researcher was introduced to the PlumX metrics within the dashboard, he recognised that his publications that identified a specific region in the title 
were gaining less attention than those that didn't. As a result, he's able to make more informed decisions about selecting titles, keywords and abstracts that emphasise the relevance of the research beyond the immediate region it was performed in, and to be more targeted when selecting journals to submit articles to. Hi, I'm Rebecca. I'm a library technician in the research services team and work within ECU's institutional repository, Research Online. Uh, my job centres around ensuring that ECU-affiliated publication metadata and, where possible, a version of the publication are accessible on Research Online. So Research Online plays a significant role in increasing the accessibility and reach of a research and works to promote and increase citation metrics for publications posted on the repository. Um, so in to ensure easy access to the publications in ARU, the careful and accurate input of publication metadata is key to my work. Um, this includes grouping publications into correct disciplines, proofing information such as the citations and author details, uh, providing accurate links to access publications and ensuring all necessary information is clearly visible in the publication information page. Um, this ensures the easy retrieval and use of publications and data by users of RO. Uh, the location of publication embargo dates and copyright information is also a vital step in making these publications accessible in RO. Here we determine when or if we may host an author's accepted manuscript version of the publication uh, in our repository, and if any restrictions are applied here by publishers. As the availability of the author's accepted manuscript can be tailored in RO according to embargo restrictions, we can ensure that the maximum amount of permitted content is available for users at any given time in the repository. Uh, finally, when permitted by both the publisher and the authors, we can attach an author's accepted manuscript to the publication listing in RO. So this final stage involves us reaching out to the authors to request that they may provide their manuscript for inclusion. So this is really the ideal scenario as it allows free and easy access to the publication, especially if the publication is in a journal where ECU doesn't provide a subscription license. Um, so you can be certain that the readers won't come up against uh, access restrictions such as a paywall and in turn this increases the likelihood of the usage of the research and the citation of a work, which uh, in turn affects the citation metrics. Hello, I'm Maureen Colcord and I um, work for the ECU Library Research Services as well. And I look after the um, ECU thesis. Since 2011, ECU PhD Masters and First Class Honours thesis have been made available on open access in PDF format through Research Online, ECU's institutional repository. The whole thesis collection has been digitised and print copies are being returned to their authors where possible. The library also collects the thesis for ECU archives and students need to provide the library with a complete and modified version of their thesis and a thesis submission for ECU archives and repository form. This form is signed by both the student and the supervisor. We also provide a guidance note on how to fill in the form. The library doesn't receive thesis directly from students, nor do students upload their thesis into the repository. Due to the increase of the thesis with publications, the library provides support to the authors regarding copyright issues in their thesis. Also due to issues of copyright, sensitivity, IP, security, intention to publish, etc., the library has taken a very flexible approach as to how the thesis is made available on research online and also on how much of the original thesis is to be made available through the repository. Some of the options available are the option to set an embargo date. This embargo period can be amended if requested. The full thesis to be made available on research online on open access. The full thesis is restricted only to current ECU staff and students. They also have the option uh, for portions of the thesis to be made unavailable or the thesis to be totally restricted. When theses include AV, audio or video, AV files are no longer embedded in the thesis, but are uploaded separately as streaming AV video files. Research Online provides links to and from streaming, streaming videos and related theses. Student publications are also highlighted in Research Online 
And when mentioned in the thesis, links are also made to and from the related thesis. Hello everyone, my name is Rochelle Palmer and I'm a librarian with the Library Research Services team at ECU. One of my roles in the team is outreach to researchers in the form of workshops, training and maintaining our LibGuide. The topics we cover are quite vast and range from data management, using citation databases to locate metrics, articles and journals, and social media for researchers. These sessions are developed based on researcher needs and we remain adaptable in their development and timing. Last year was one of upheaval and unpredictability across the whole research support sector and for my team at ECU it was no different. Luckily I had already had experience with offering online support and consultations. As we have three campuses we have always sought to provide all of our services equitably no matter the researcher's home campus and when the need arises. I use these skills to quickly move all of our sessions online and get in touch with all registered attendees to let them know that if they could not attend the sessions, recordings and individual training was available at a time convenient to them. With many researchers also having teaching loads and moving their courses online, as well as disruption to their research projects being there at a time when they needed support was more vital than ever. We also keep records of our queries and consult sessions and notes on the topics of inquiry to hopefully spot any patterns of clusters or repeated questions. We also use this when planning the following year's program of events to ensure that our program meets the timing of events in the academic calendar such as promotions and grant writing as well as teaching commitments. We also use this past year to work on a team project to refresh our library guide, the Researcher's Companion including working with a web designer for a redesign of the look and feel. This has proven to be invaluable to our researchers as they can locate information when they need it. We also use this as our research workshop calendar where both our offerings are listed and the webinars and training from publishing partners and external sources. Here at ECU we are very fortunate to have the Western Australian Academy of Performing Arts or WAPA. Supporting researchers in this area in gathering metrics in order to show evidence of their research impact presents unique challenges. As many of the research outputs from WAPA are non-traditional outputs and often transient in nature due to being live performances or displays. Seeking metrics through traditional citation databases such as Scopus and Web of Science does not provide the whole picture of the researcher's impact and engagement. Metrics need to be meaningful to the researcher and their discipline, and there is not a one-size-fits-all approach, especially when it comes to the creative and performance arts. In this case, it is up to the support librarian to be as creative with avenues used to find the evidence as the researcher is themselves with their outputs. When assisting a researcher to find these metrics, it is important to also train the researcher in how to gather metrics and what to think about when undertaking research so they may capture this evidence. Unfortunately, if a researcher has not been capturing the evidence of interactions with their research, it can be difficult to reclaim this information. As such, the education and support of researchers begins long before it is time to compile metrics for use. Outreach is vital to supporting researchers. The Library Research Services team provides regular training opportunities, workshops, as well as maintaining a LibGuide. Each of these support types are developed according to the needs of our researchers and current trends in research. All researchers should ideally be taking a holistic approach to metrics rather than focusing on a limited range of their scholarly communications. As researchers often have active roles in both traditional and social media and in public to educate and inform the community. Much of their impact and engagement can be lost if the focus is placed squarely on a single citation metric. In the case of the creative arts, and to some extent the arts and humanities, researchers have no choice but to look wider and dig deeper. While services that offer the automatic generation of metrics are an enormous boon, there is much to be said on the benefit of understanding manual metrics. These are metrics that must be gathered manually. These often involve some thought and creativity and can provide a rich and comprehensive picture of the researcher. These are valuable in any discipline. The last year has shown the research community the importance of outreach and connection to the community and the role researchers play. There is an increasing interest in researchers being able to demonstrate these activities. 
Possibly the most important role of a support librarian in assisting researchers to gather metrics is knowing the right questions to ask. Today's case study focuses on a researcher from WAPA who we will refer to as Researcher A. Researcher A is a renowned musician with many outputs including 20 albums, recordings and a very active schedule of live performances. How can Researcher A demonstrate his impact and engagement without relying on traditional citation metrics? He is seeking to gather metrics to demonstrate evidence of the impact of his work for various purposes. Luckily, Researcher A has been aware of the importance of promotion on the internet. The process of gathering metrics is often a collaborative exercise between the researcher and the support librarian. As in many cases, the librarian will be able to suggest an avenue but will be unable to access the final figure of information. Such as in the case with album sales, which would require contacting the publisher. My first step is to go to our institutional repository, Research Online. Here I find a list of his research outputs from his time affiliated with ECU. From here I can view in-depth Plumex metrics and I can see that some of his works have been tweeted about. I can access this information on each of the individual records. I suggest that researcher A log into his research online account to access his own personalised dashboard which includes readership information and the Plumex metrics dashboard. This provides an easy and effective way for researchers to not just gather their alternative metrics through the PlumEx service. It can also be used as a way of monitoring the effectiveness of social media strategies. The dashboard also provides the researcher with graphs of downloads and page hits. WorldCat is also a fantastic resource for finding metrics in the creative arts and humanities. Firstly, we can view the number of libraries worldwide that hold his albums. Using WorldCat, we are able to view the albums that have library holdings. Using the refined search facets to the left makes it easier to find just albums. I also suggest that using the facets to search for articles is an effective way of finding reviews and articles that have been written about the creative arts researcher. We can see on this slide a representative sample of some of the reviews that Researcher A has received. Overall, he has 115 articles and reviews written about him. This is a fantastic resource for researchers looking to find text-based context for their metrics or for review snippets for self-promotion. Facebook metrics provide information about the number of likes and follows a researcher has and metrics about the engagement of individual posts including likes, shares and comments. All of these are valuable metrics that demonstrate the researcher's engagement in the community. Facebook is also a great way to locate information about previous events and performances for researchers. These should be used in combination with ticket sales, numbers from the venue. You can see that Researcher A has a long list of events. It is worth noting that due to the effects of COVID-19, many researchers in the creative arts may have had a break in their live events over 2020. In some cases, they may have had virtual events. Researcher A is highly visible on YouTube with several channels with different focuses. From here, we can gather information about views, subscribers and likes, as well as comments. The top number of views for Researcher A is 7.2 thousand. In total across his channel, he has 430 subscribers with his top channel having 342. His top album on YouTube has received 1,209 views. Twitter is invaluable for researchers to promote themselves and their research as well as to connect with others. In this case, we can see that Researcher A has 732 followers. Researcher A also has a Wikipedia page about him. You can access the information about views by selecting page information from the left hand panel. Over 30 days, there have been 23 views of this page. One of the most important roles in supporting researchers in providing is providing advice and ongoing support. In this instance, I would discuss with researcher A his goals and identify any gaps that may need to be filled. Whilst researcher A has a Twitter account, this could be leveraged more effectively. This will have the benefit of increasing his, the metrics available on the Plumber X dashboard on the repository to improve the types of metrics available. I suggest that he link to his publications on the repository using Twitter. This increases the likelihood of the alternative metrics services algorithms being able to pick them up. Where available, he should also use persistent identifiers to link to his work. 
The library also has on-demand recordings of workshops about social media for researchers. It was also identified that providing a stronger link between his social media platforms would be beneficial. For example, tweeting about his events listed on Facebook and providing links to his Twitter on each of the events page to increase engagement. Our repository is also able to host recordings of research outputs in our audiovisual collection for streaming. In this way, he can increase the value of the dashboard for gathering metrics in one location.